Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to a different format of the tennis nerd vlog. Uh, I tend to dislike videos when someone is just looking at the camera and talking into it and there's nothing really happening. Uh, but I'm going to try this format and see how you like it. Uh, please comment below if this is something you want to see more of or if you have any interesting ideas of topics you want me to talk about. Uh, so today I'm just going to talk a bit openly and, and briefly about tennis rackets, what different tennis rackets there are. Um, <clears throat> it's a jungle out there, there are new rackets released every year. Lots of new rackets, there are a lot of different brands. Each brand have different lines and then each line have a different models in that line. So uh, it's a very difficult uh, place to navigate for someone who's new to tennis, but even for someone who's been playing tennis a long time. Uh, which I have, I've been testing hundreds and hundreds of rackets and customized them, changed strings, tensions, whatever. It's been uh, a passion of mine and a long journey and uh, that's why I started Tennis Nerd all these years ago. So I hope I can give some of my learned information and insight uh, that I've acquired over the years through this channel and through TennisNerd.net. So if you haven't already, please check out TennisNerd.net for any more information around tennis rackets, strings, reviews, gear and what the pro players use. Uh, so let's look at the pile of tennis rackets I have here next to me on the couch. And we'll just talk about the different types of rackets you can choose from. So these are rackets that I have <clears throat> in my home right now and in, in the office. Rackets I'm testing. I'm not really a collector, I have some interesting rackets in my uh, collection, but I don't really tend to amass rackets. After I've tested them, I either sell them or keep them, depending on what I feel about them. <clears throat> Let's look at what we have in the kind of beginner spectrum. Interesting new racket. This one uh, is called Pacific Nexus 102. 102 stands for the size of the frame in inches, square inches. This is an oversized frame, anything above 100 is an oversized frame. This one is 102, so it's not much more than the, maybe the most common uh, recreational head size, which is 100 square inches. What's interesting about this one, uh, there are a few things. Uh, it has a thick beam, which is where most of the power comes from with these rackets. When you see a thick beam racket, you should uh, see it as a powerful racket. There are very few exceptions to that rule. So this one is really light, so it's definitely quite easy to swing. Uh, so it's 260 grams unstrung. So when you add strings to a racket, you get about 15, 60, 17 grams uh, worth of strings. So you have to add that on top. Also, what is called the balance point, how the racket balances. You see how this balances a lot to the head. Even if I'm trying to do it on my finger, it's just tilting downwards. So it's a lot of mass in the head here. The reason of that is that it is very light, so to have any stability when you make contact with the ball, you need to have some weight in the head, otherwise the racket is just going to wobble like this and you're going to have a lot of uh, unfortunate hits and miss hits and it's not going to be very stable on contact. So they add a lot of weight here. The weight that's very low makes it quite easy to swing despite the weight here. Usually a lot of weight here will make the racket really heavy to swing through the air. And uh, what happens is that when you add weight to the hoop here, you increase swing weight and swing weight is how heavy the racket is to swing. And that's a very important uh, measure to have. There are machines that measure swing weight. There is also a manual method you can use. Uh, you can find it on the Tennis Warehouse University. I might do an article about that as well. Uh, it's a bit cumbersome to do the manual method, but it's, it's worth trying and you'll really figure out what kind of swing weight range your rackets have and what you kind of like, I think. Um, so this racket, it's very light but a lot of weight here, so the swing weight is still decent. You still get some plow through on the ball, so it really contacts and pancakes the ball and um, you get some stability with that. It has a 16-19 string pattern, so that's how many I mean, this is the basic stuff, so I just want to get into that. But the mains is the 16 mains, so quite open, and 19 crosses, so um, quite a spin-friendly pattern. 
the wider you have kind of the holes here, the wider the string spacing, the more spin you tend to get and the less control. Uh, so this one is quite a spin friendly racket, it's not ultra controlled. What this one does, uh, which is a new technology, I think it won some award for that in Germany. It has this air damping system, which to you tennis nerds out there is similar to like Bablat Cortex, where there's like a dampening system here. Um, and um, it actually seems to work really well. I, I hit with this racket a few times and it feels like hitting a pillow. So if you have any arm issues at all or any problems with um, tennis elbow, etc., I think this racket could really be interesting for you to try. And uh, it's very lightweight, so it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but for veteran and doubles players, beginners, I think this specific Nexus 102 is an excellent frame to try. Um, so, oversized racket, very light racket, um, great for beginners and good for spin and some power too. Usually these thick beam rackets are very powerful. So that's one end of the scale. That's uh, a very easy to use racket. You get depth into the court with it without having to have the most amazing technique. Next frame in the pile I have here, let's go to the other extreme. We have uh, Prince Phantom Pro 93P, um, quite hefty racket, ultra thin beam, it's 16-18 um, millimeter uh, tapered beam width, really thin, gets a bit wider up here, up to 20 I think. And this one is heavy, it's 330 grams unstrung, so you have a difference of 70 grams uh, in unstrung weight, which is quite remarkable. Uh, you have a much smaller head size compared to the Nexus. This is 93 square inches, which means you have a smaller surface to where you actually contact the ball, which means you usually have a smaller sweet spot. And it's less forgiving, obviously, if an off-center hit will be uh, like just dipping straight into the net, you won't get any help with your tennis when you use a big head size racket, it's light and easy to use and you get some free power. 
even off-center hits will likely land somewhere in the court or at least towards the court. Uh, this one, however, you need to be a quite good player to use. It's a, what I, I would call a player's frame, where more advanced players uh, will actually like this frame, but for beginners and intermediates, it might be a bit difficult to make good contact. It's heavy to swing. Uh, one way to make it easier to swing is to have more headlight uh, balance. So it means that there's more weight in the handle of the racket. As you can see, if I just do this uh, balancing here for illustrational purposes. So there's more weight here, that makes it decently easy to swing despite being 330 grams unstrung. Um, this one is a bit funny because these types of rackets from the good old days of so more traditional tennis, um, this one has a very open string pattern. So this is 14 mains and 18 crosses. So it's very open, creates a lot of spin, but it's not the usual control you would find in these types of rackets. They also have an 1820 version, which I personally prefer, but for some players I think it would be interesting to try this racket. It's a nice playing frame. You get a lot of feel thanks to this thin beam. You really feel where the ball hits um, in the string bed with this frame compared to the other one that's a big giant pillow. It really depends on what you like as a tennis player. All these things, uh, finding your racket, finding your string, finding your ideal weight, balance and swing weight. It's all a personal journey. You can't really copy anyone else, not the pros, uh, not your best friend, uh, not, someone, not your tennis coach at the club. You should play with what you feel comfortable with, what you think helps your technique and your game and what accentuates your strengths and hopefully diminishes your weaknesses. So this one is on the other end of the spectrum compared to the Nexus. It's more of a player's frame. It just has this with funky string pattern. This frame is reviewed on TennisNerd.net and uh, this YouTube channel, so you can check that one out. Uh, fun racket to play with, although it's not something I feel 100% confident with when I'm playing a match. And that's why it's not something I'll bring into a tournament. Uh, you really need that confidence when you choose a racket where you feel like anywhere on the court you feel like you know this shot I can hit it uh, and it's up to me. It's not something you feel insecure about the racket or the strings or something. So you need to find that setup and try to use that. I think that's the best way to improve through gear at least. Um, so this one is, is a different beast compared to this one. So let's head over to something that's a bit more in the middle. Uh, it's a Prince Techstream Tour 310. Um, it's a 100 square inch racket. So this one has a 1618 string pattern, quite open. And um, the beam is 22 millimeters, so it's kind of in between the two rackets I've shown you on the kind of uh, different ends of the spectrum. It weighs 310 grams, so also somewhat in between, although 300 is more the standard these days of recreational uh, rackets. And it has quite a headlight balance for this frame. This can be used by intermediate players, it can be used by advanced players. You can customize this racket to your liking, like with any other racket. And one way to customize this, which I have already done, is to add lead tape on the side of the frame. I'm testing now with the, the, with the 3 and 9 positions, so you have the racket as a clock face. I usually like to add weight at 3 and 9. Possibly because I, I grew up playing with the Wilson Pro Staff, uh, the 6195, which has something called perimeter weighting system, and that's more weight at 3 and 9, which helps expand the sweet spot a bit. It's going to have a somewhat of a higher twist weight, so the weight it takes for the racket to twist, and um, that usually makes it a bit more stable also on off-center hits. And also it creates a bit more power, because when you actually impact the ball, you have weight on the side to help the racket push through. 3 and 9 is not the optimal location for spin. I might get to that in another video, but um, it's something I like and I tend to add weight there. Sometimes I like it at 12 o'clock and sometimes I just want to get the weight up without changing any characteristics in the balance of the racket, etc. And then I can add it over here in the throat. So this I'm really happy with. It's uh, quite powerful, but it's not overly so. Um, really nice feel. Um, so it's a good frame. And this is where most rackets are today you find like a 98 to 100 square inch racket is the most common and you see a lot of um, younger players playing with 100 square inch rackets 
but 98 is a bit gives you a bit better control. So the smaller the head size, usually the better the control to be a bit um, generalistic and the bigger the head size you get more power, usually more spin because you have more, more space between the strings. So this one I think they balanced out quite well. So, so if we go down in head size, we can look at something like this. This is my own paint job done by Unstrung Customs uh, in Marbella and um, it's a liquid metal radical tour which is one of my favorite rackets of all time. I love that racket. It's not easy to use, it's quite heavy, 325 grams unstrung. Um, has these ridges uh, which are now painted white which has something called liquid metal. This is old technology so I'm not going to dwell on this because you can't find this in the store. I'm just talking about this style of racket. What's very popular among the pros is a 95 square inch head size racket uh, so it's smaller, it's more towards the 93, the Prince, and it's an 1820 string pattern, so very tight pattern. You get lots of control with this one, it's great on the slice because you can really get a deep uh, skidding slice with it, uh, but it's very difficult to generate any spin, and it's also quite different, difficult to generate power. That's why you need weight, so it's a heavy racket because you need that weight to be able to generate power and to have a good stability when you hit the ball. Uh, the bigger the head size, the better the stability in the frame, uh, that's science. The smaller the head size, less stability, so you need more weight. Uh, that's a rule to keep in mind. So this paint job, I really like it. They did a great job with this. Uh, if you want to see how it looks uh, without a funky paint job, I'm going to pick one up for you. And then it looks like this, uh, which is also cool. Orange, silver. So this is my perhaps favorite racket of all time. I might not use it in tournaments all the time because it's quite difficult to use and uh, I might not be the player I should be uh, to use this kind of frame but I just love playing with it because the feeling and the control is just brilliant and you can just pick up uh, low balls to your feet and it's super stable. So that's what makes me like this racket. But what, this is very common spec, kind of heavy tight pattern, uh, you have Djokovic, you have Murray, uh, Murray uses a slightly more open pattern but it's still a tight one, Gilles Simon, there's so many players um, on the tour using this kind of 95 square inch, 1820 pattern, Del Potro for example, I can mention quite a few, um, because it's, you just get fabulous control, you're, you feel like you're in charge where the ball is going, uh, which the pros need, they don't have problems hitting in the center of the racket, that's what they do for a living. Uh, so they know that, they have perfect technique, uh, so they don't really need to worry so much. While for us recreational players, it might help to have bigger head size, more power from the frame thanks to the thick beam, so we get something for free. We get free spin, free power, easier for us to get depth through the court, while the top guys can easily play with these kind of player frames.
Then we have something that we can call an extended length racket. That means it's a longer length. I'm testing this right now. It's from a new company in Australia called Tenex Pro. They have a technology called Uniflex where the, the whole racket flexes uniformly. So some rackets flex in the head more when you hit the ball, so they vibrate more in the head. Some flex in the throat and this one flexes uniformly across. Um, this is all a matter of taste, some people like that, some people don't. Um, I tested their Excalibur which is more of a player's frame and I really enjoyed that one. So I hope I will like this one too. It is quite uh, tricky to use it because it's very heavy because of 315 grams unstrung which is not huge. But then with the extended length, so when you're swinging an extended length racket it takes more to swing, so the swing weight is naturally higher. And uh, the swing weight is what you should think about when you're playing, uh, when you're buying rackets and testing rackets, because you might have a swing weight range where you feel comfortable, and that is why you might not really like a racket. Although the specs on paper, weight and balance, uh, looks to be good, but then you have an issue with the swing weight. So this one has a really hefty swing weight. Uh, and it takes a lot to swing it. Uh, so the extended length, a standard length racket is 27 inches. So I picked up this prototype I have from Head of a new line that's coming soon. I'm really happy with this frame, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then you see, let's see how much difference there is between these rackets. So, so like this, this is the difference, quite a big difference. So that's 27 inches versus 27.5 inches. Makes a huge difference in how you swing the racket and how it will feel when you play it. Usually higher uh, swing weight rackets will get more stability, uh, you'll get more power, but they will be difficult to swing. The, another pro with extended length rackets is on serve. So a lot of shorter guys on tour, let, let's say uh, Schwarzman for example, he really benefits from a longer racket, he usually a 28 inch racket. Uh, so he can get better reach on the serve, a higher contact point, and uh, I must say he has a really good serve for his height. So that really helps, and that's something you should definitely try. If you've never tried an extended length racket, try one, see how you like it. It's not for everyone, but it's interesting to, to know uh, if you're missing out or if you're just uh, using something you really like already. So that's something as well you have to consider, is extended length for you. Who knows, um, I, I'm, I like to play with extended length rackets, but it's not something I can uh, comfortably use in a tournament. So anyway, that's a short vlog uh, about tennis rackets. Should I do more content like this, talking in general about frames? Do you have any questions about tennis rackets? Send them over, add them in the comments below, and I will do like a QA and uh, upload. So I will be vlogging a bit more often, uh, which I hope you like. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a nice day. See you on the tennis court.